Hey y'all, I am in beautiful Peterborough, New Hampshire for work. But I just wanted to take a second to let you guys all know how special Maureen is to me. Um, maybe because I had seen her in season one, so I felt like I knew her, or maybe because she'd already been through the journey. Um, so she knew what we were all going through and how there would be ups and downs. I don't know, but she came at the moment I needed her. She gave me belief in myself, understanding of the mess ups, right? Trying to do better and trying to be better. And um, I think she helped the others accept, right? As well, in, in, in their own journeys also. But I was having a hard time, right? Um, I had a lot of resistance from the women. So she changed the course of my journey and I'm not sure I can put it into words. <laughs> and I don't want to give any other spoiler alerts away because I want you to watch this with an open mind and an open heart, but she's very special to me, always will be. And uh, I'm very grateful she walked into the house, even if I hate what brought her there. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> uh, I know it's coming, so more in the future, but just needed to give you that so you'd know who's walking in the door today. Previously on Starting Over, Jennifer had a hard time understanding and forgiving her mother, who has multiple sclerosis. I'm ashamed of you because you use your condition as an excuse. You can be the mom in a wheelchair. You can be responsible from a wheelchair. Tawanda worked toward her career in music. I got you a producer and a keyboardist that are going to take that hook and lay it down. Josie tried dealing with the pain of being given up by her mother so she could be raised by her grandmother. My dad beat my mom. Is that the last memories? Yep, pretty much my dad and my mom fight. And my dad beat her up. And you couldn't do anything, could you? My mom told me to run away. She, and never, my she, grandma never, she never really took care of you. No. And Sine graduated, which means a new roommate is on the way. No matter who comes in next, she's definitely, definitely going to turn the house upside down for a while. Yana said that I am uh, projecting Devorah onto the new roommate. <laughs> Do you think you are? Oh, because, well, I wrote in the Discovery thing that I'm nervous about getting a new roommate, and I wonder why. Because of her. So maybe a little bit. I don't know. But I decided, instead of making it all up in my head and thinking about it and worrying about it, and I'm just going to see what happens. I mean, I wonder how she's going to be, but I don't sit there and say, well, she's going to be like this, and I think she's going to be... I don't yeah, know. we do that. I don't know. Yeah, so I'm not going to do that this time. Well, good, Kimmy. Maybe I'll even like her. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Stranger things could happen. Stranger things have happened. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. I'm excited about today. Mm -hmm. This is a good day. This is a day that we have never, ever seen before. Just take a nice breath and breathe in some new myth. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we have an opportunity to be who we've never been, do what we've never done, experience what we've never experienced from a whole new place. So today, Miss Josie, your mom is coming. Yes, yes. How do you feel about that? I'm really excited to see her, but at the same time, I'm kind of nervous. Why? Um, I'm really not sure what she's going to think of starting over the first time she didn't ever come to the house. So this is like a huge thing for my mom to even like step foot in this house and spend the night here. OK, delete. Just push the delete button. Delete that, because you got a new opportunity. You said that now you you guys are 
talking and being together and getting along. What happened? Honestly? Yes. I think it's because of her. Chloe? Yes. Miss Chloe, you're a unifying factor. Yep, yeah. I think so. And I don't get mad at her for how much she puts into Chloe. And I actually praise it because I could be jealous of Chloe and be like, well, I can't believe my mom does all these things with her and I don't think I ever had it. I think that the bond between a mother and daughter is something that goes way beyond the physical. It's my mom's birthday today and it's a little ironic that we're talking about moms in group today as well. Jennifer, Lady Jennifer, your mom had a mess. What was that like? I felt like I was the mom and she was the kid yeah. for a long, long time. Probably until just about a couple weeks ago. Really? Where I started to realize that she did the best that she could and it wasn't like she was doing it intentional. Because for some reason, I turned the way that she treated my sister compared to the way that she treated me as a personal attack on me when it wasn't, she didn't favor me or my sister. And since I make up stories in my head, that's what I made up in my head. Right now, it's really hard for me to talk about my mom and her illness because I feel like I'm dealing with so many emotions just with myself. What did you make up in your mind about the fact that your mom wasn't there, couldn't be there? Because you had to have some storyline running, which was? That she was choosing not to be. OK. Even though she was in a wheelchair? Right. Hmm. And Josie had a very liberal kind mm -hmm. of upbringing. I felt like I was the mom, and I was constantly babysitting. So, like, I would do all these things for her just to be, like, happy. I'd clean the house all the time. And she would miss setting her beer on the counter. And it would fall on the floor. And she'd look at me and be like, I'd be like, pick it up. Don't just look at me. Like, I'm supposed to be like, oh, it's OK. It's not OK. Pick the beer up off the floor. You're spilling it all over the carpet. And so what disturbed you, that she spilt the beer or that she was drinking it? Both. Yeah. What, what is that like to see your mother drunk? Well, it's pretty much all my mom knew because my grandpa was that way, and I lived with my grandpa. So I got to see my grandpa always be drunk, and then I got to leave my grandma and grandpa's house to go to my mom's house to see my mom always drunk. Mm. So there wasn't really a big switch. And but moms are not supposed to be drunk. They're supposed to bake cookies and be there. Was she there for you? My mom is really good at playing the mommy role and then going back to where she wants to be. My grandma, on the other hand, lived the role and wanted to be there and wanted to do all those things. What's the one good thing you got from your mom? Her, um, her smarts, her willing to push forward and to, um, a lot of good things my mom did, since it seems like I don't say anything. Um, my mom started the school paper at our school. There never would have been one unless she did it. She made it to where girls could wear jeans in our school instead of having to wear skirts. And I think she pushed for all the right things at the right times. And um, I, I think I got that from my mom, because I did all those things that I could in school, too. So. All right. What's the one good thing you got from your mom? The ability to let go sometimes and like release that tension, like my laughing and all the time. And that I get that from her. Tawanda, what one good thing you got from your mom? Singing. Singing. She taught all of her children how to sing. Singing is really allowing me to go to a different place. I'm discovering my true self, and I'm OK with it. That's good. OK, good. One good thing you got from your mom. My mom has always been an advocate for women, always. Really? Even back in the day, and she volunteered all the time and always reached out to other women. And I have done the same thing. Jennifer, one good thing you got from your mom. She's very forgiving. Wow. So we'll have an opportunity um, to really support Josie and her mom. If you don't get do anything else, be sure to get a picture of that. Three generations of women together. It's a really powerful visual. Jennifer, I've arranged for you to meet with an MS specialist today. I think it's very, very important for you to understand where she is, where she's been, and where she's going. 
in terms of that challenge in her own life and own being. And ladies, this evening, you will get the opportunity to meet your new housemate. I think as long as the new roommate is halfway normal, I'll be so welcoming. As long as she's not like Deborah was, I will be fine. Estimated time of arrival will be for group this evening. All right, ladies, create a great day. I'm hoping that my mom can see that I'm trying to not be so negative anymore. I feel that from being and starting over the first time and Chloe and I just being here in her life, that even though she doesn't live in the starting over house, that we're kind of rubbing off on her. And it feels really good, because I don't like her to be so mean to herself. I don't think she's a bad mom. I may have been mad at her, but I love her. She's my mom. And I forgive you for making me weak. I'm worried about it being a song that's going to define you, that's going to define your sound. Hi. 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 Are you Jen? Yes. I'm Lori. Hi. It's nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My earliest memories include my mom's disability. I think it might be helpful for me to ask the MS specialist about how the disease is going to continue to progress. I know that you do have a mother yes. who has multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. She has had multiple sclerosis since she was 19 or 20, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she had me when she was 21, so okay. right after she found out, she got pregnant with me. Okay. It's gotten progressively worse as I've gotten older. Like you have the people who only have certain episodes of it. Right. But hers is all the time. Like, it's not like she... It's not uh, relapsing. No, it's not like she wakes up one day through. and it's a bad day. Uh -huh. It's a bad day every day. Every day's a bad day. Right. And some days it's even worse. Right. <laughs> yeah. Every day's a bad day and some days are worse than others. That's how gotcha. it is. How is she dealing with it emotionally, do you think? She doesn't really show that she's upset about it. Okay. Like, I've never heard her say, why me? Why is... Okay. That I've never heard that come out of her mouth. My mother and I do not talk about her illness or the fact that my father is in prison, ever. Those two things never come up, and they never have. So that's how it's dealt with, is just basically don't deal with it. <laughs> yeah. My mind is full of thoughts of Josie and Chloe and when Josie was little. Come in. They can't hear you say that. You say come in like oh, people hear you. That's your mom. Hi! Hi. We've been waiting for you. <gasps> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> A mother and a daughter and two beautiful smiles. What more could you ask for? Yes, I do remember me. So how does that bring you here to this house? When I was 13, my dad got arrested and put in prison for dealing drugs, so. At 13, and that's when your mom was still kind of progressively getting Right, worse and, and worse. after he went to prison, she got way worse. Okay. But that's when it really got bad. Well, how are you feeling towards your mother right now, knowing that she's back there and she's like? I feel a lot more compassion for my mom than I did when I first came. Because when I first got here, I really felt like she had just given up and there was more she could do. And it, it didn't dawn on me that maybe she was just doing what she could. Mm -hmm. Like I... Doing her best. Right. Do, I, I never thought of it that way. 
Have you talked to her about that? No. <laughs> no, no it's not yet. Not yet. I'm more than willing to attempt to talk to my mom about her sickness and the fact that my father's in prison. I am worried, though, that she's not ready to not be in denial. What do you think she might say when you have that discussion, if you say, you know? Well, and a lot of my withholding mm -hmm. stuff from her is coming from not wanting her to feel guilty about the way things have gone or the choices that she's made. So, in a sense, I'm hurting myself by protecting her. So it's almost like it's okay for you to feel guilty. Right. But you, it's hard for you to think about her feeling guilty. Right. And so you're just trying to protect her. Mm -hmm from that pain, from that additional pain. This is my roommate, Tawanda. How do you do? Hi, How's Nancy? Nice Hi. to meet you. Thanks, baby. That's Hi. Kim. Hi, Kim. Nice, nice to, to meet you. Meet Hi, Nancy. You. Nice to meet you. We get a new roommate tonight. Oh, well, that's interesting. God, you've grown. You're beautiful. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, I'm so wrecked. Here, look out our window. This is what I was trying to see. I to you in that noticed rain. the drive up. The view was, my God, it was outstanding. Isn't it, though? Yes. Yes, it is. My mom is finally here, and it's just really good to be able to share, you know, a lot with her and just to let her hang out with me. And I really miss that, and it feels really good just to be able to kind of be the daughter again instead of the mom. Let me get a grip on the Klomeister here. Tawanda's going into the recording studio today. It is really important for Tawanda to get out of her comfort zone. I want her singing in a whole nother zone. I have no idea what to expect. I kind of sort of feel that I'm being thrown into a lion's den of perfection. And I can't wait to exactly find out what it is that we're going to do. Tell me, what's up? How's the inspiration? Um, it's interesting. Interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. I like interesting. Interesting because, you know, this isn't something that I'm used to. Okay. Working yeah. exactly this way. I'm used to actually having the shell or the track. Okay. And being able to write to that. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm used to. Good. Well, tell me a little bit about your background then, because I'd like to know. Um, I'm used to being in the studio. You are? Mm-hmm. And I'm used to writing. And I'm used to doing it that way. So you've already recorded before? A long time ago, yeah. Working with Sebastian, I really don't believe that it's important to express to him what I've done in my past. And for me, this is just a clean slate. I'm starting new, fresh as Chloe, so I just want to leave it that way. What we stumbled on last time mm -hmm. is has the potential to be incredible. That's not even what, what I'm worried about. I'm worried about it being a song that's going to define you. Right. And that's going to define your sound. Mm -hmm. We need some lyrics. We need... I know. We need some lyrics. Well, I wrote down some lyrics. You did? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Is there anything that you wonder about other families dealing with MS? Well, yeah, there's always times where I'm like, is this normal? Like, to not talk about it? Mm-hmm. And, like, to understand what she goes through. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I feel yeah. like there's so many different symptoms yes that it's it's hard for me to understand what she goes through and one of the things that makes it so complex is that it it plays differently for different people that have it and not only is it so different from person to person but it can be different for the same person on any given yeah. day and so much of it has to do with the fatigue factor fatigue is a huge element of ms because when a person feels fatigued, it's, it's waking up in the morning and feeling like you can't get up and face the day. Just physical exhaustion. And yes, that's, my mother has that. That sounds familiar? Yeah. And because it's so, it's so not textbook, it's not something that right. you can read in a no, book and it's know not. what your mom is going through, it makes it doubly hard for you to try and mind read what is happening to her. Mm -hmm. Every family dealing with MS is different. Mm -hmm. There are some similarities. And one thing that they all have to deal with is, is the unexpected 
uncontrollable nature of the MS. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just affect the, the person. I mean, you're, I can just, that somebody with MS doesn't know what to expect on a daily basis, and they're scared. It's understandable that your mom might want to use that denial from time to time. But that's so neat that you're really trying to break that wall down. I think it'd be interesting if you would be able to talk to her about some of these things we've talked about at yeah. some point in your life, you know, when the time is right. The one good thing that I'm taking out of my conversation with Lori is the fact that my mother, I think, is in denial about her condition and the fact that my father's in prison. That didn't really hit me until I'm having this conversation with Lori. Thank you for coming. It oh, was it's really my nice pleasure, meeting you. Jennifer. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Take care. You too. Well, these are some of the words for the verses that okay. I came with. Holding back the pain, don't want to show the tears. I have decided there's no more fear. Listening to reasons of why I can't control myself. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. And then doing the hook thing. And then the second verse. The title of the song is Here I Am. And I actually wrote two verses prior to arriving. And I believe he was a bit surprised. I don't think that he really thought that I was going to have anything. And all the words are actually coming from my heart. Now it's time for me to say I'm sorry. And I forgive you for making me weak. So don't try to tell me that you won't hurt me again. You're human. That's all. Thanks, I like the melody you're singing. It really it could be I'm just coming up it, with it. It could be another song. Oh, okay. Because that feels like it could almost be like something more for the clubs. Okay. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's got that kind of... Mm -hmm. That could be really funky, really cool. Writing this song is releasing all of these feelings that I'm having. And instead of communicating it, I'm writing it. And it's therapy for me. Oh. And that's a little scar. Oh. You want to oh sit my down? goodness. You want to sit down? There. Looky here. Looky. Look. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's got a big bow on the back Cute. and the little, the little kerchief scarf. Mm -hmm. But it got way too small for her, like in two days. Well, I don't know if. That's perfect. I don't know if this is. Let's see. There we go, like that. There we go. Let me see. <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> look at you. Look at you. That's, That's great. awesome. Oh, look at that. Isn't that neat? You look neat. Yes, you do. Well, here, you open this first from her. Oh, okay. I don't want to lose the bow. There, I got it. There, Grandma got it. Yeah, it came from a store called Nicole's on Sunset. Okay. Do you like paper? Grandma likes paper. Oh, my God, Josie. Oh, that's... Oh, I love that. Oh. Well, you know... You know where my heart is, don't you? Oh, that's gorgeous. I, that was so you. That is beautiful. Is that pretty? Is that pretty? When I saw that, I was like, I have to get that for her. Isn't it pretty? Yes. Oh, what is that? Pretty. Is that pretty? I was like, that's totally her. I think my mom tries so hard to do so much for Chloe because she feels she failed to me. <laughs> and I know it hurts her so bad, and it hurts me because I know that's why she tries so hard. And I'm hoping my mom is going to try to be the grandma that I had from her mom to my daughter. Why don't you tell the ladies of the Starting Over House why you're here? That's a terrible thing to happen. I don't know how you would ever get over that. He would have liked you. I'm amazed at how she has grown. I'm amazed at how alert and vocal she is. Can you say mama?
Mama? Hmm? Mama. Wow, very good. It's thrilling. It's thrilling. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Is it cold? You do so remind me of your mother. Does it feel good? I'm not jealous of the relationship my mom and Chloe have at all. I value Chloe more than anything in this world. Mom, do you hear Mama? There she is. And I don't ever want her to think that she's not my number one pride and joy. Hi, Hi Mom. <laughs> Hi, what are you doing? And sometimes I felt like I wasn't for my mom. Super baby. I felt like I was a burden and I was a problem. And I wasn't supposed to be here because I screwed up her life. <laughs> and I don't want Chloe to think she's a screw up or a mess up or a mistake because she's not. So talk to me. What did she tell you that you didn't already know? We talked about what it's like to be in my position, to be a kid with... No, I'm an adult. Yes. Thank you. To have a parent. To have a parent. Yes, good for you. Good for you. That has multiple sclerosis. Okay. So we talked more about, like, the guilt that I have had. Yes. And the resentment that I have had. Okay. You know, about that. So what else did you learn? Well, the one thing that I learned that I think was the most important thing was that... I think my mom is in denial about being sick. That's just something we don't talk about. We don't talk about my dad being in prison, and we don't talk about her being sick. Is that a conversation you'd like to have with your mom? Not over the phone. It's what we call a fierce conversation. Mm -hmm. There's something you want to say, you want to know, you want to understand, you want to heal in order to take the next step. I think if I called my mom and just tried to be open about everything that's gone on in my life that involves her. I don't know that she'd be really receptive to it. I think she's so far in denial about a lot of things that I don't know that I would really get anywhere. So what else did you learn? Well, this didn't really come from her. OK. But I'm sick of playing the wounded child role. Yeah, we got and that I done. I feel like, for me, to not want to be in that role anymore, mm -hmm. then I shouldn't talk about the feelings that I had previously had. OK, I let me see if I'm hearing you. Okay. You're saying that you are now ready mm -hmm. to surrender your role right. as a wounded child mm -hmm. of a parent incarcerated and a parent with multiple schools. Right. That's, that's a role you had to play. Right. There were feelings mm -hmm. and there were experiences that went along with that. Right. And you want to honor that. Mm -hmm. But and, not live it like it happened it yesterday. Like it's still happening. Right. I wonder what would happen if you shared with your mom the skills that you're learning here. I said that today to Lori. <laughs> We are considering, preparing to have a fierce conversation with your mother yes. regarding what you want to say, what you want to know, what you want to understand, what you want to heal, and what your next step is in your relationship with your mom. This is good. Yes. Thank I'm, you. I'm happy. This is good. We are all trying to figure out who's coming to the starting over house tonight. And a bunch of the girls look outside and they think they see a 20-something beautiful, hot, tall model. I'm scared to death that I'm going to get some crazy person as my roommate. So I will be happy if she's even halfway normal. When I play something like this and it makes sense, forget it. It's like, that's how you know. But I think that as far as the hook, especially like playing it with piano kind of in this rock style, mm -hmm. it feels really good. A lot of B sections and pop and stuff, you know, they, they'll do something that's like bright. And, mm -hmm. nah, 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 nah. I think this one should be opposite. It should be dark. Yeah, it should be like kind of, because this is pretty well, energetic, wording, pretty cool. should be dark. And the music. OK. Like it should be like.
imagine. That's just the, imagine the, with an arrangement. Um, right. That entrance is going to be huge. I want this to have that kind of feeling where it's like, when when you when you own that chorus, like it just feels like you're releasing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this part can be totally cool. Even we can do something at the end to make it extra, like. Did you feel that? I did. You feel know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like it 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 has this rage to it. It mm -hmm. has the rock element. It's which is what I want. Yeah. that I can't be there for my mom's birthday. I think this is the first birthday that I've missed. I just want to call you and tell you happy birthday and I love you. I love you too. And I'll talk to you later. All right. Okay, bye. bye. You went to the recording I studio I went to the recording today. studio. And, and, and what happened? We went over lyrics. Oh, new lyrics. Can I hear that? There is pain. I feel like crying. There is so much control. Um, but I have to let go, stuff like that. In my mind, I had a different tune of it. Okay. And when I got there with Sebastian, he had his ideas. Right. And his ideas worked. Okay. You know, and then he told me, he was like, well, I like what you did. That's another song in right. itself. So, you know, he said, I love that tune. So we're remembering that tune in the back of our minds for another song. So what is it that you want the world to know? I want the world to know that even though I, f I feel pain, even though, yeah, there are times where I feel like I have to be in control, I'm not perfect. I go through pain. I go through struggles. And in the end, I'm going to shine the way that it's moving, it's, it's just going to be the bomb. Ladies, yeah. how you living? Good. So. Boom. No. Why are you staring at me like that. Wondering. Where is she? You're hiding her from us. You're getting a new housemate today. So how does that Tonight. feel? Tonight. Right now. Right now. Bring her in. Oh, no! Oh, yes. <laughs> Maureen has joined us. As you, most of you know, she was in the first Starting Over house, and she is a successful Starting Over graduate. Her goal was to become a stand-up comic, and she did, and she has. So I want to congratulate her on her success. Thank you. So you might be wondering, why is a successful Starting Over graduate back in the Starting Over house? Well, Maureen needs us right now. So why don't we lift up the plasma and first tell a little bit about what her life has been, and then maybe share with you why she's here. Maureen, why don't you tell us who that is? That's Larry, my husband. We'll be married, uh, it was five years, April Fool's Day. Five years? And what is your relationship with Larry like? We get along. You know, he's a different kind of a man. He uh, keeps to himself and is a loner. And so do you have some frustrations in your marriage? Absolutely. Next photo, please. Hmm. This is my daughter, Linda. She died 14 years ago in May from leukemia. And... And she died two years after she was diagnosed, when she was 23. She was 18 at that, in that picture. And that's my daughter, Kara, and my son, Joe, on his 33rd birthday, which was in June, and then the following December, he died of a heart attack. So you've lost two children. Yes.
that's me at the comedy spot. That was my big night. My mother is Italian. My father is Jewish. I have her mustache, his great legs. <laughs> Tell the ladies what it felt like to achieve your goal of becoming a stand-up comic that night. Ah, my family was there. My friends were there. It was just... I was petrified out of my mind to even <laughs> go up there. It just... It flowed. It just went... The whole night was just perfect. I got up there. I did everything perfectly. And everybody laughed. I was just so happy. And right after that, Maureen is actually the very first graduate of the Starting Over House. First SO grad. And this is the pride and joy. Can't tell you how many times I heard about this condo when she was in the Starting Over House. And then finally I got to go there. Why don't you describe your condo to the ladies? That's my living room. I had Sarah Graf's and original illustrations to Ertes and just nice things all around the house. And don't forget the crystals, balls, lithographs. Everything. everything. Let's Art. just say your house was packed. <laughs> I love it. Just love it. Tragedy struck today as this apartment building on Chicago's west side was ravaged by fire just a few hours ago. My husband was on the computer. He came in and he got me and said there was a fire going on. When I came out of room, I saw fire in my living room. And I think it started out on the uh, porch. Blew in the window, the drapes caught fire, and uh, we got out. The smoke detectors in the, uh, you know, in the hallway of my house didn't go off. I saw black smoke coming out, and I was, like, sad because my whole life is in there. Why don't you tell the ladies of the Starting Over house why you're here, Marie? The house went up, it smoke, it's gone. Everything is lost. It's big trash pile of fire. And I'm <laughs> starting over again. Everything's gone. I really feel badly for Maureen. That's a terrible thing to happen. First, she shares with us that she has lost two of her children, which I don't know how you would ever get over that. And then on top of that, now she has a fire and has lost everything. And how did the fire start, Maureen? It was unknown origin on the uh, balcony. My husband was on the computer, and uh, I was watching the news, and he saw orange on the balcony. And he went out, and he started to open the window, and he saw the Weber grill and the propane tank and he went whoosh, closed the door with that the fire was so hot that it blew the windows out and the drapes caught fire and then he ran and got me and said the house is on fire he had a phone and he set off went down the halls and knocked the alarms and got everybody banging on all the doors to get everybody out of the house and then the other the rest of the people in the other lower floors started evacuating this is devastating this is depressing. This is horrifying. Maureen has been very successful in her life avoiding pain. And now her unwillingness to cry only tells me she's doing it again. If she continues to avoid pain, I'm very, very worried for Maureen. One of the things that happens when people have loss and things happen that, that are unexpected, like a fire, they can, one, be difficult to overcome, Two, a lot of the grief and loss they've had in the past might come up. And three, some of their past behaviors that maybe she learned in the starting over house previously, she's going to go back to world behaviors because for safety and security reasons, which we all understand. You know, you go back to what you know kind of thing. So I thought Maureen should come back to the house so we could support her. I guess I just have to let that go and know that as much as I loved these things, they were material. And they came from the earth or gone back to the earth. Uh, I could go to the store and buy more of them eventually if I could find them. Some of them were just like, were totally irreplaceable. I couldn't go to the store and buy my children when they left. And uh, I guess I can't use the word die because they left. And uh, I have to cry. Yeah. I have to just cry and I have to somehow or another just forgive whatever caused the fire to cause this, this destruction in my life. You know, it's like I, I was out, I came home, watched the news, and 45 minutes later, I was on the news. Maureen is here to overcome her loss, to deal with the grief and sadness. She does not have any goals or steps because she's already graduated. We're just here to support her. 
And I will be her main coach. Yanla will be her sport coach. Jennifer, you'll be her roommate. And I invite you to welcome Maureen to the Starting Over house and take care. I think that Maureen is going to actually probably offer a lot to us since she is a Starting Over graduate. And at the same time, I think we're going to be able to actually, you know, help her really more in the fact that she's had so many losses and now once again another loss. I'm excited about Maureen because, first of all, she knows the ropes. But also, I'm excited because Maureen is, um, she's funny. She's very real. I think all of the housemates can make Maureen feel welcome just by taking the time to get to know her and to listen to her. I think that's really the only way that all of us can make her feel more a part of the group. I'm glad you're here. It was really nice meeting you, and I'm really sorry about it. That's just what it, I can really relate. Every single thing in my house represents something to me. I really feel badly for her. I think it's just terrible what happened. Ooh, yours is pretty too. Beautiful. <laughs> See, all, my jewelry, all my jewelry got saved. Boy, was I happy. Well, I hope we can support you. I really do. The starting over house in Chicago was my safe harbor. And I was comfortable in there. And uh, I know that there'll be freedom here from all of the pressure of the loss and uh, start over again. Next on Starting Over, Maureen tries to shut out her enormous pain. It is okay to be devastated by this. Choose weakness. When I finally cry and let it all out, it's going to be like a dam bursting. A family secret comes out. I didn't know that. Or probably I just choose not to remember. I would never do that, no matter how horrible my life was. And Josie tries to get answers. I'm not going to talk.